in Law and Economics, the Coase theorem describes the economic efficiency of an economic allocation or outcome in the presence of externalities. The theorem states that if trade in an externality is possible and there are sufficiently low transaction costs, bargaining will lead to an efficient outcome regardless of the initial allocation of property. In practice, obstacles to bargaining or poorly defined property rights can prevent caution bargaining. This theorem is commonly attributed to Nobel Prize laureate Ronald Coase during his tenure at the University of Chicago. However, Coase himself stated that the theorem was based on perhaps four pages of his 1960 paper The Problem of Social Cost, and that the Coase theorem is not about his work at all. This 1960 paper, along with his 1937 paper on the nature of the firm, earned Ronald Coase the 1991 Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. In this 1960 paper, Coase argued that real-world transaction costs are rarely low enough to allow for efficient bargaining and hence the theorem is almost always inapplicable to economic reality. Since then, others have demonstrated the importance of the perfect information assumption and shown using game theory that inefficient outcomes are to be expected when this assumption is not met. Nevertheless, the Coase theorem is considered an important basis for most modern economic analyses of government regulation especially in the case of externalities, and it has been used by jurists and legal scholars to analyze and resolve legal disputes. George Stigler summarized the resolution of the externality problem and the absence of transaction costs in a 1966 economics textbook in terms of private and social cost, and for the first time called it a theorem. Since the 1960s, a voluminous amount of literature on the Coase theorem and its various interpretations, proofs, and criticism has developed and continues to grow. The theorem, Coase developed his theorem when considering the regulation of radio frequencies. Competing radio stations could use the same frequencies and would therefore interfere with each other's broadcasts. The problem faced by regulators was how to eliminate interference and allocate frequencies to radio stations efficiently. What Coase proposed in 1959 was that as long as property rights in these frequencies were well defined, it ultimately did not matter if adjacent radio stations interfered with each other by broadcasting in the same frequency band. Furthermore, it did not matter to whom the property rights were granted. His reasoning was that the station able to reap the higher economic gain from broadcasting would have an incentive to pay the other station not to interfere. In the absence of transaction costs, both stations would strike a mutually advantageous deal. It would not matter which station had the initial right to broadcast. Eventually, the right to broadcast would end up with a party that was able to put it to the most highly valued use. Of course, the parties themselves would care who was granted the rights initially because this allocation would impact their wealth, but the end result of who broadcasts would not change because the parties would trade to the outcome that was overall most efficient. This counterintuitive insight to Euro that the initial imposition of legal entitlement is irrelevant because the parties will eventually reach the same result a Euro as Coase a Euro unregistered trademark S invariance thesis. Coase's main point, clarified in his article The Problem of Social Cost, published in 1960 and cited when he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1991, was that transaction costs, however, could not be neglected, and therefore, the initial allocation of property rights often mattered. As a result, one normative conclusion sometimes drawn from the Coase theorem is that liability should initially be assigned to the actors for whom avoiding the costs associated with the externality problem are the lowest. The problem in real life is that nobody knows ex ante the most valued use of a resource, and also that there exist costs involving the reallocation of resources by government. Another, more refined, Normative conclusion also often discussed in law and economics is that government should create institutions that minimize transaction costs, so as to allow misallocations of resources to be corrected as cheaply as possible. Version 1, a clear delineation of private property rights is an essential prelude to market transactions. Version 2, as long as private property rights are well defined under zero transaction cost. Exchange will eliminate divergence and lead to efficient use of resources or highest valued use of resources. Version 3 
the allocation of resources is invariant to the assignment of private property rights under zero transaction cost and zero income effect. Efficiency and invariance, because Ronald Coase himself did not originally intend to set forth any one particular theorem, it has largely been the effort of others who have developed the loose formulation of the Coase theorem. What Coase initially provided was fuel in the form of a euro or a counterintuitive einheit a euro that externalities necessarily involved more than a single party engaged in conflicting activities and must be treated as a reciprocal problem. His work explored the relationship between the parties and their conflicting activities and the role of assigned rights liabilities. While the exact definition of the Coase theorem remains unsettled, there are two issues or claims within the theorem. The results will be efficient and the results in terms of resource allocation will be the same regardless of initial assignments of rights liabilities. Equals efficiency version, aside from transaction costs, the prevailing outcome will be efficient equals, the zero transaction cost condition is taken to mean that there are no impediments to bargaining. Since any inefficient allocation leaves unexploited contractual opportunities, the allocation cannot be a contractual equilibrium equals invariance version, aside from transaction costs, the same efficient outcome will prevail equals, this version fits the legal cases cited by Coase. If it is more efficient to prevent cattle trampling a farmer's fields by fencing in the farm, rather than fencing in the cattle, the outcome of bargaining will be the fence around the farmer's fields, regardless of whether victim rights or unrestricted grazing rights prevail. Subsequent authors have shown that this version of the theorem is not generally true, however. Changing liability placement changes wealth distribution, which in turn affects demand and prices. These wealth effects may be small, however. Equivalence version, in his UCLA dissertation and in subsequent work, Stephen N. S. Chung coined an extension of the Coase theorem, aside from transaction costs, all institutional forms are capable of achieving the same efficient allocation. Contracts, extended markets, and corrective taxation are equally capable of internalizing an externality. To be logically correct, some restrictive assumptions are needed. First, spillover effects must be bilateral. This applies to the cases that Coase investigated. Cattle trample a farmer's fields. A building blocks sunlight to a neighbor's swimming pool. A confectioner disturbs a dentist's patients etc. In each case the source of the externality is matched with a particular victim. It does not apply to pollution generally, since there are typically multiple victims. Equivalence also requires that each institution has equivalent property rights. Victim rights in contract law correspond to victim entitlements in extended markets and to the polluter pays principle in taxation. Notwithstanding these restrictive assumptions, the equivalence version helps to underscore the Figaudian fallacies that motivated Coase. Figaudian taxation is revealed as not the only way to internalize an externality. Market and contractual institutions should also be considered, as well as corrective subsidies. The equivalence theorem also is a springboard for Coase's primary achievement a euro providing the pillars for the new institutional economics. First, the Cauchian maximum value solution becomes a benchmark by which institutions can be compared. And the institutional equivalence result establishes the motive for comparative institutional analysis and suggests the means by which institutions can be compared. The equivalency result also underlies Coase's proposition that the boundaries of the firm are chosen to minimize transaction costs. Aside from the marketing costs of using outside suppliers and the agency costs of central direction inside the firm, whether to put Fisher body inside or outside of General Motors would have been a matter of indifference. Application in United States contract and tort law the Coase theorem has been used by jurists and legal scholars in the analysis and resolution of disputes involving both contract law and tort law. In contract law, Coase is often used as a method to evaluate the relative power of the parties during the negotiation and acceptance of a traditional or classical bargain for contract. In modern tort law, application of economic analysis to assign liability for damages was popularized by Judge Leonard Hand of Second Circuit Court of Appeals in his decision, United States v. Carroll Towing Company 159 F2D 169. 
Judge Han's holding resolved simply that liability could be determined by applying the formula of B.